What's up everybody? It's the uh, Granddaddy Crystal Spider here and I just had uh, quite a few thoughts coming through and some messages that I wanted to direct your way. So uh, one of those messages is it's very important as we move forward in the future to stay in harmony with the uh, pendulums in reality. Uh, as described in Reality Transurfing, uh, if you're not familiar with what a pendulum is, it's uh, a pretty easy concept to understand, but it's basically a very powerful uh, force of energy in reality. Uh, an example is the federal government. Um, you want to stay in harmony with these pendulums and not directly push up against them with uh, large amounts of energy because they will wreck your ass. And uh, it can be very, very destructive to yourself, more so than the pendulum. And the reason why it works that way is because the pendulum uh, is much more powerful than you are. Um, and, you know, when we're looking at the federal government, for example, it's, it's a perfect example of a pendulum that shouldn't be just directly pushed up against with a lot of aggressive uh, type of energy. I had to learn this the hard way um, with what happened to me last year. Uh, I, I had created this website, killgovernment.com, and um, I don't know, I was kind of in this mindset of, you know, not being afraid of death and stuff, and that's good on some level, but uh, you don't want to be reckless either, and you just have to realize that certain pendulums are going to be here for a large amount of time because they're so large. That's what that's the reason why you shouldn't be pushing up against these pendulums is because they've got a lot of force and momentum behind them and pushing up against them is possibly a good way to uh, get yourself wrecked. Um, typically what these pendulums do according to uh, reality transurfing at least is if you get out of harmony with them they either destroy you or they move you out of their field of influence and as as anarchists it's a very fine line that you have to uh, tread here between you know telling the truth and being real uh being true to yourself being true to natural law and the truth itself you know because we are trying to do an unselfish thing for the world and for our listeners and for other people in general by bringing them the truth and uh you know those types of truths they are a, a threat to the pendulum on some level so you know it's important not to have an overly aggressive energy towards things that are much bigger much more powerful than you are if you want to um stay alive and continue this fight long term and stuff and you know, for that reason, when when you're uh, dealing with people in reality who are working for a pendulum, you know, state enforcers, that kind of thing, you don't want to be aggravating them, <laughs> and you don't want to be causing them anger and stuff. You basically just want to be in your own, own lane, doing your own thing, uh, not being overly threatening um, to uh, their enforcers, you know, especially, or, or just... The pendulum itself in general um so you know th this is of course has got to be balanced out with not being a coward and uh refu you know just being so fearful that you refuse to do what's right and uh, i'm not trying trying to really dwell on that but you know in my example in my life uh lately is this threat to my garden that uh some local local uh, city employee um, in the in the city itself kind of <laughs> it's kind of silly uh, and I just see it that way as it's just some kind of silly thing that that's ha that happened that uh, is not really a big deal and for that reason I'm kind of expecting nothing to really come out of it you know I'm not trying to start shit I'm not trying to let the pendulum steamroll me and control me either. I'm just kind of doing my own thing in my own lane. The, the garden's turning out fine. I'm still making progress on it. It's going to be fine. Nothing to worry about there, you know. But if, if you were to uh, take it in, in a more destructive direction, what you would be doing uh, in that case is taking it personally and getting starting a huge scene, starting fights with uh, city employees and stuff. And that's just a good way to get yourself in court <laughs> wrecked, you know, so uh, let's not do that. Um, 
basically what we're trying to do is safely uh, and, and keyword safe, safety and safe. Uh, you want to exit, you know, the uh, destructive uh, nature of the pendulum, possibly even remove yourself from its physical vicinities. In my case, you know, getting out of the city uh, into, because the ci cities are, are another example of large pendulums. The city uh, has got its own rhythm, its own vibration, its own rhythm, especially. And when, when you think of a pendulum swinging in all these different directions, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. So, you know, the city that I'm in, it's got a lot of energy going on constantly all the time there's sirens going off there's uh firefighters doing things paramedics doing things cops all over the place doing their thing basically you just want to stay out of all of that and stay out of trouble don't be uh don't just you know you, you have to you have to um I mean, it's 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 pretty simple explanation, but basically, you don't really want to stand out in a way that is causing a, a any kind of immediate problem um, for for the pendulum. You know, unless you've got uh, some exit plan immediately, uh, it's best to just kind of lay low, do your thing, stay under the radar. Uh, you know. And uh, if you do that, uh, you know, harmoniously and you're truly on a good path for yourself and, and for the people that might be listening to you or the people, uh, you know, around you that you're directly helping as a part of your uh, local network, you could say, the pendulum will typically leave you alone because there is karmic law and uh, these types of occult forces they have karmic law and justice that they have to pay as well. If they attack uh, innocent people, there's a price that, that even large pendulums have to pay. And uh, for that reason, they are aware of uh, natural law. They are aware of karmic you know, consequence and prices that even they have to pay for violating innocent people. So, you know, you, you might think about that and wonder, well, how can the dark occult get away with torturing the innocent and stuff and starting wars in other countries? And, you know, it just seems like it just endlessly goes on forever. But the actual truth is whenever those pendulums get out of harmony with the other pendulums in reality, that might be bigger than them. Uh, you know, things like other countries, uh, Ukraine war being a good example, it costs the pendulum. The pendulum loses momentum by going and acting out destructively against other pendulums. Um, you know, and, and a lot of these pendulums are, you know, controlled by some kind of master uh, spider, some, some sort of master hidden hand that's actually directing all of them. But they do also operate somewhat independently, uh, you know, as smaller pendulums there. It's, it's kind of co a coordinated game of master of puppets, as you could say, and, uh, the, you know, these large puppet masters, they've got a lot that they're trying to coordinate all the time. There's, it's uh, a, tr a tremendously huge job to do what they do. And, you know, they've got millions and millions of employees around the world helping them with all their agendas, helping them keep, uh, keep, things marching on as as they should according to their views you know and uh it's a big job and is if you just kind of stay under the radar and do your own thing they don't really have any kind of reason why they need to just come down on you so you know don't uh, attract that kind of negative attention to yourself and uh just have a little bit of of uh, have your eyes open and be aware that and understand why you should stay out of their you know radars and stuff because they're bigger than you that's the reason not because anything they do is right or anything that they do is just it's because uh, they're just larger than you and they've got more military and police enforcers and uh you know when it comes to uh, self-defense and it come when it comes to um even militia tactics and like general you know generals on battlefields have to think this way too there are certain fights that you shouldn't start with enemies that are larger than you. it's just it's just like a basic military 
military understanding and tactic that if you're going to go up against directly against something, you better be bigger than it. You better have more intel. You better have more awareness of the batter, battlefield. You better have a solid, you know, military strategy if you're going to fight something directly, you know, with force. And in the case of us anarchists, we don't really have that. We don't really have any kind of military advantage. We don't have more people. We don't have more intel. We don't. We don't have more NSA and more, uh, you know, brute force to be doing battle with these kind of pendulums. They'll squash your. They will squash you like a bug as soon as you uh, get into that um, vibration of trying to combat them in any in any way, really. So. You know, things need to be done more tactfully and more practically uh, to, to stay alive in the long-term battle and stuff. And uh, with the future, the way things are going for me, it's looking really, really, really good. I, I can feel, and I started to feel this maybe a week ago, uh, that I was getting into the beginning of, uh, of an upward spiral that, you know, as long as... I don't do anything to screw it up, and I just kind of continue doing my thing, can only get better from here. And if you if you ever get into that uh, mindset and feeling in your heart and stuff, it's a very good sign that, in fact, things are rapidly going to accelerate and bring you uh, out of slavery into the land of, of freedom and opportunity and, you know, harmony and, uh, you know, connection network, if that's what you're about. Of course, if that's not what you're about, that's not what's going to happen, but that's what I'm about, so that's what's going to happen for me. And uh, I, I see a lot of opportunities and possibilities rapidly manifesting in my network and in my immediate and long-term future, and for that reason, I'm just kind of like, Sitting here enjoying myself, uh, knowing that every single day I'm, I'm actually making progress towards these ama amazing goals that I have set for myself, and just sitting here, not eating popcorn per se, because I don't eat, eat popcorn, but uh, the uh, like the an analogy of a person sitting back watching a TV movie play a really good movie that you know is going to have a, a solid you know, ending, and then every chapter in the movie is only getting better, and you're just like, man, this is the best movie that I've ever seen, and I know it goes on forever, and it's only going to get better, you know, so that's kind of the vibe that you want to get into, it's, uh, I forget what they call it in reality, they have a weird word for it, but it's basically when your heart and your mind get into alignment, and you you shift yourself, frailing is what it's called, the, the, the book's pretty genius and and the the writer invents his own kind of language and his own terminology to describe all of these uh subtle dynamics uh with the reality transurfing principles and stuff and the pendulum being a, an example of a uh i I, don't, I had never heard that word used in that context before reading that book so frailing is a, is, a, is another cool word that the guy made up i i guess where basically you figure out how to get on to an all-star timeline for yourself, you know, where uh, you just start doing bigger and better things and your, your heart feels happier and happier about the progress that you're making and you just know it's going in the right direction. And I, I've been starting to feel that lately. I was having a little bit of trouble with uh, a webcam or earlier today. I was recording a a podcast with Corey, uh, who did the end of end slavery, end of slavery summit. And I was having webcam issues. I didn't, I wasn't sure what it was. I thought it was the zoom software on Linux or something, but I think, uh, after going through a little bit of a debug process, uh, that's actually something to do with the operating system that I, that I have a Ubuntu in there can be very, very troublesome and glitchy sometimes, you know, uh, for that reason, I think Mark tends to go with the Mac platform and stuff. I, uh, on some level, have been trained very extensively with Linux, and I'm comfortable with it. I have, thankfully, uh, two Linux machines, and uh, I was testing the other one out 
looking at alternatives to the Zoom web conference web conferencing software, uh, the one that Corey said he uses is I forget what it's called, but it's some decentralized uh, online based um, meeting. Uh, Jitsi, I think, or something. Jitsi Meet, something like that. Jitsi Meet, and I was looking into that. They didn't have an easy way to record uh, using that, and it just it was getting too complicated. I was putting too much energy on it, and I was like, man, this is kind of lame. So on my on my smaller Linux machine that's less powerful, I was testing out Zoom, and it was working fine. So in the future, when I'm doing uh, Zoom meetings, it's going to be on my uh, smaller computer, and you know, uh, I, at first I was kind of like, well, I liked my uh, office in there for um, podcasts and stuff. But then I was starting to think about what advantages there might be um, to uh, just having to use my um, smaller computer for Zoom meetings. And some advantages starting started to creep into my mind. I was like, well... This computer's in this living room area. I've got this nice pallet. I can move the computer out a little bit, put the, mo you know, put the monitor over there, and uh, have my mic set up so that I can lay down and lounge around, and have a nice little comfortable, uh, you know, party zone over here and do podcasts that way. And I was like, you know what? In some ways, this is actually better than doing podcasts in uh, my office because it's just more chill and relaxed. And I never would have seen uh, or thought to even do podcasts in here, um, you know, Zoom calls in here. Um, but now that I was forced to, uh, you know, this is another concept in the book, Reality Transurfing, is um, seeking the advantage in, in situations uh, in really every situation is what the book says is, uh, you want to, um, always be seeking the advantages in every situation. And I kind of, I could kind of forgot that principle until, uh, you know, I, I gave up with the other computer and I was like, well, I'll just use that one for video data processing and this one for meetings. I didn't really like the way it was set up over, over there, you know, in the corner. I was like, this is kind of, it's kind of cramped in that corner it's not really maybe my energy won't be on point if I'm just cramped up in some corner and then I was like well okay whatever it's better than nothing and then I started to think I was laying down on my pallet I was like you know I could just pull the computer out here and have a little little uh tripod with the with the video um the webcam you know and just lay down and, and, I, and I was like yeah that actually sounds way way better and cooler than doing it in my office you know and it's more unique too and it, I don't know. So it's so it's an advantage. It actually worked out, uh, you know, for the best. And that's just a small example. Um, in the future, what I'm going to be working on is uh, tribal sovereignty, um, building up properties in uh, various different areas, uh, networking in person with. You know, one great law, one great work, uh, natural law, truth or types who I've identified as local to uh, Missouri and stuff. And, uh, you know, I've got all this video equipment. Uh, I've got this solid professional camera and uh, the uh, video, video editing down, the data processing down and stuff. And so these uh, assets will be useful in... Um, building my network and also empowering other people to uh, produce really high quality video content and stuff. So look forward to that. Keep following me. Um, help me help me build up my uh, subscriber base and stuff if you want. Um, definitely had to start over multiple times, you know, with my following. So, um, you know, there's a reason why my following count is really pitiful and small right now. And really, I don't think it has much to do with the quality of my content as much as just bad luck and having to re restart over and over again. I've been in this uh, podcasting game for like six years now, put out over 200 episodes and stuff, and it's only getting better. And I was starting to get in that vibe where I was like, yeah, dude, everything's getting better for me. You know, and that's that's where you want to be in terms of uh, reality transurfing. As soon as you get that feeling in your heart and your mind is agreeing with that and it's like, yeah, this is rapidly getting better. That's when, according to uh, reality transurfing, 
And I would read that book if you haven't. Um, if you, if you, if it sounds like you might need to read it, you probably should. Uh, that's according to that book, uh, a 100% solid, uh, sign that in fact, things are rapidly getting better and you might actually be surprised by the uh, progress that you're going to make soon. So I'm just taking it all as a, as a really good sign. Uh, I see a lot of things, a lot of pieces falling into place. I'm getting into a sovereign uh, business, uh, private business, um, private law. I'm, I'm starting to uh, get more and more empowered legally um, and uh, the way I'm doing that is by I've got I've got actually a magic spell. Um, I'll, I'll just show you my magic spell. I think I've shown it before, but <laughs> yeah, it's a show and tell moment. And uh, I was kind of proud of this magic spell. Actually, I learned some of these techniques from this guy on YouTube, Bro Yosef. He teaches magic and stuff. But yeah, here's here's my office. Uh, these com this computer that I was talking about over here. It's just kind of. It's kind of it's kind of um, more it's a less uh, it's a less intimate vibe in here and more left brain I would say this is where I do a lot of my left brain work but I also have got this going on <laughs> some of these these little babies are asleep right now you know they're nice they're nice you you like having little babies like that right so anyway here's my magic spell I'm trying to keep. Here's my magic spell. Hopefully uh, you guys can kind of see what's going on a little bit, you know, but basically uh, what I've got here is a Black's Law dictionary surrounded by uh, a bunch of organite that I made. This is actually a new Black's Law dictionary, 11th edition, like deluxe. I ordered that uh, on credit earlier uh, a month ago or, or, or so, and uh, the idea was that I was going to learn how this black magic uh, legal fiction stuff works so that I could then try to use it to my advantage. And, uh, you know, I, I had been researching for, for years a little bit. Um, I had been researching, uh, just hearing about people becoming le legally sovereign in all these different ways getting themselves out of US, jur U.S. Corp jurisdiction and stuff uh, here and there and everywhere. Um, and, and apparently there's a bunch of different approaches and ways that people have accomplished these kind of things. And uh, the, one of the latest ones that I had heard was becoming a state citizen. Uh, another, another one is a U.S. national. Um, even people in the One Great Work Network, like Corey, for example, on the end of slavery summit one of the people was talking about this exact thing uh doing what's called a status correction where you're no longer uh operating as a u.s citizen and you actually inform uh people in the government that no you're not a u.s citizen and you need to stop presuming that i that i am a u.s citizen or that i'm a corporate you know legal fiction and you know so I had heard I had heard this from a from a commenter who was being very rude on uh, Bitchute. He he was kind of a hater, and he was being very condescending and mean about it, and just just an asshole basically. <laughs> um, but he he I think he was on to something as far as uh, the state state citizen you know path. You know I just I didn't feel comfortable taking the advice of some asshole I don't know who's being very mean to me on uh, BitChute and just, you know, he, he had linked some dinky fucking uh, website that was looked like it was am an amateur website built 15 years ago with information that's probably outdated and who knows, who knows if it's actually true or not. Uh, I, I, I saved the website in my bookmarks. You know, but I was like, there's no way I'm doing that without knowing more about this. And he, he was being very mean and didn't, not understanding at all, just being a fucking dick. You know, but, uh, you know, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, that would be great. Uh, I guess it might be working for him, you know, but I, I just personally would prefer to uh, know what what the hell is going on with this stuff. And I was like telling him, I was like, hey, 
I, you can't expect me to just do this blindly. I would kind of like to have, you know, be able to run this by a lawyer or some shit before I go and fill out this paperwork, you know. Um, and uh, so th those was part of my intentions. And I had been hearing again from Bro Yosef and, a, and a, a, another guy about doing things legally to establish a sovereign tribe or private jurisdiction secure secure party process is something i've been looking into lately this legal teacher on uh, youtube he's really really awesome his name's uh yusuf l he's in tune with natural law uh in tune with all this conspiracy information and uh you know, in the global battle for freedom. And he's got a pretty big following. I signed up for his uh, online teaching university class. Uh, super high quality information. I'm probably really going to go down the route that he is uh, prescribing for people. Uh, it does involve uh, status correction, uh, but, uh, but it also involves a lot of business and... Um, trust law you know but but his whole philosophy is that you shouldn't be just filling out paperwork blindly you know following some other guru and you know filling out one piece of paper sending it somewhere and then thinking that you're good no he's like no you have to understand every every word on these documents and you need to have a solid legal uh background education wise uh you kind of want to be a do-it-yourself lawyer slash businessman with this kind of stuff and i was like all right now you're now you're kind of speaking my language we're not taking any shortcuts here we're not having faith in random strangers we've never met online we're not you know, just because because the other the other way that a lot of people typically do, and he he was saying people do this is they uh, they find some guru, do one piece of paper, and they're like, all right, well I did my one piece of paper. I guess that means I'm sovereign now. I don't have nothing to worry about. And oftentimes, he was saying that you actually can get yourself in trouble that way. And you know, like people in the system, the government, for example, will look at your behavior. And they will, they will be like, okay, you filled out a piece of paper, but that piece of paper is actually not valid, and you're still in our system. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about, sovereign and, and private and whatnot, when you, you literally put in very little work into this, and you're still doing business as a U.S. citizen. Like, that that's, just doesn't vibe. You're still under our jurisdiction. Sorry. Sorry you thought that that one piece of paper makes you sovereign, but it actually doesn't. And now you're going – now now we're going to charge you a whole bunch of money and you might be going to jail. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to, to let that happen or anything. Um, so I am taking it very seriously. Like that, that – the, the intention behind that magic spell was to – energetically bring me more knowledge about how the legal and business world works and uh just that book uh black's law dictionary has got a lot of attention on it right now there's a large trend going on online of people looking into uh how the legal system works and uh look trying to understand this kind of black magic and stuff and so for that reason, since so much attention is on that book specifically, uh, I thought it would be a good magic spell to just put that book sandwiched in between a bunch of organite and crystals and other things. And uh, one thing that I found with that organite that I make, that's some stainless steel organite, is if your third eye is open, uh, you can actually tune into it and it's strange if you've never worked with the third eye it's going to sound weird but the uh, stainless organite allows you to kind of see through uh objects of a light density meaning uh objects that aren't super heavy um you know like clothing or uh in this case paper so the idea being that you can put the organite on the 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 book or a, any book really and then the, the organite will subtly allow your mind to pick up on the words diagrams and the information inside the book without you having to read it um i wouldn't say that's what's happened this time around with that magic spell per se but what it does seem to be doing is creating a uh, energy vortex uh you know that i'm kind of in the middle of 
of just legal information and that was kind of what I was trying to create and so you know, I found that I've been getting into this mood where I can focus on uh, the teachings of people like Yusuf L. I was listening to him on YouTube, his free content and stuff for a while, and he kept talking about uh, just the context of uh, pub public versus private um, business and jurisdictions and stuff, and a lot of the different parts and a lot of the different, you know, moving parts in the legal system and how... Just, just overall big picture context stuff. Uh, so I was like really resonating with him as a teacher. And for that reason, I decided to pay for the uh, online course and go sign up for his online university. And so I did that and I was looking, he's got a lot of good information on there. And, you know, I was like, all right, this is what I needed. Uh, so I'm, I, I went to a, one of his classes today and, uh, I forget what he was talking about, something like discharging debt, um, you know, getting out of mortgages and different debts that people throw on you uh, because, you know, the, these corporations, uh, they act similar to a uh, mafia and a gang and stuff, and they're kind of in bed with the government and the government's their enforcers, and a lot of people are intimidated by them, and, you know, the, the tendency for the slave is to just pay up, pay up, pay up endlessly, pay endlessly paying taxes, endlessly at the mercy of banks, of, uh, you know, lending companies, uh, things like that, endlessly at the mercy of the judge. And this guy is completely more empowered than an average slave to the point where he can go to court and boss the judge around, boss the whole system around. And, and he's speaking their language and he's done all his homework, crossed all his I's and T's, and he's got a legal advantage over these people, corporations, and entities in many, in many situations, a knowledge differential, you know, where he's studied and they haven't, and he can point out all kinds of holes in their contracts and all these different ways of uh, getting out of debt and doing different things. You know, so it's a lot to learn, but it's just one uh, thing I got cooking in the oven. You know, the other things are like got food, food garden businesses, uh, plant medicine stuff, you know, this camera and uh, data processing. I'm, I'm going to get back into coding and stuff, web development and whatnot. And, you know, making network, uh, growing my network of uh, online um, contacts, uh, online friends. Uh, whenever Mark added me to the One Great Work Network, it really, really helped, um, you know, expand my network of influence and also bring other people who were my vibe, my type of people into direct communication with me. So, you know, for that, I do have tremendous gratitude for Mark and his work and uh, the One one Great Network in general and everyone that I've really met through that uh, platform has just been super solid and really good, really good for me and for the people that I'm trying to help and stuff and just for the message of freedom in general. So, you know, I can't recommend that people... Uh, Check out that content on, on the website, onegreatworknetwork.com enough. Uh, check out my content. Donate uh, would be really helpful if you're, you know, in a, in a position to do that and stuff. A lot of us, you know, are doing, doing everything on a shoestring budget with almost no funding and stuff. So, uh, you know, over time, though, as we grow the network and do more and more good things in reality, uh, I think we're going to get a lot more help and stuff. So... I'm not sure what else to say. I did want to uh, just make a quick make a quick one. I wasn't even sure what I was going to say in this one, but uh, I just felt like talking. So I'm going to take a little break. Maybe oh, I'm hitting I'm working with this Rape medicine right now again from Rape.shop. Oh, I got some new medicine. I got some new medicine. I would uh, I would recommend trying this out uh, for for these kind of companies. This this came directly from Peru. I'll just show it to you. This came directly from Peru, and it was something I needed because I had I was for for quite a while just wishing I could get a, a solid source for uh, ayahuasca vine. Um, ayahuasca vine and uh san pedro medicine specifically and i finally i finally found something that works so um this company sent me some in the mail right 
The company's name, na the website name is OKNatura.com, I think. Um, I was, you know, they, they ship directly from Peru, and uh, this here is actually some ayahuasca paste. They put it in a, a package with some, some other name on it, right? But if you look, it's actually a concentrated goo. It's actually con like a concentrated goo in here. It's not leaf, it's not vine, it's not plant matter and stuff. They actually process it for you. And uh, it's it comes in like a, you know, concentrate, extremely strong concentrated uh, extract. I'm not sure how they make it, but it tastes great. It was one of, the, one of the weird things that I noticed first. This was like actually the best tasting cactus medicine that I had ever tried. And uh, it's apparently it's just concentrated San Pedro somehow. Um, I don't know how they do it. It tastes, it tastes pretty good though. Even the ayahuasca didn't taste, the San, the San Pedro tasted better, but the ayahuasca didn't really taste that bad, surprisingly. So um, the prices were pretty reasonable too. Uh, I was afraid when I was doing my test doses with it that it was gonna be like as strong as Rick Simpson oil um, because it kind of looked like, you know, Rick Simpson oil. Uh, which is a cannabis um, alcohol extract that will fuck you up. <laughs> It'll fuck you up with just a, just a dab of that stuff. A tiny little dot. I, I take it orally if I'm going to use Rick Simpson oil. But um, So I was that's kind of what I was maybe expecting. But it really it wasn't that strong. Uh, I, I took, yeah, I don't know how much. Just uh, maybe a little dab's worth, a uh, little, little baby dab's worth or two. And, uh, you know, it was starting to, I could feel it. I, it was definitely working. So it's definitely good stuff. You know, I'm impressed with it. I would check it out, try it out. Uh, you know, I put an order in it, made it through customs and stuff. You, for, for a new shop that you're buying from online, coming from a different country, you do want to just start with a small order. You know, just in case it doesn't make it through customs, they might not refund you and stuff. And uh, if you if you were to spend, like, five grand or something on medicine and then just it, it just disappear in the mail you know if you can't afford to lose five grand uh then i just would maybe start with a, like fifty dollar order or something just to make sure it's actually gonna make it to your house and stuff so uh but yeah dude that's that's another good sign because i definitely was looking for a san pedro um ayahuasca connect and i think i finally found it so um, for, for my listeners, I'm not really afraid to talk about um, those kind of things just because I am, again, legally protected through uh, Native American church and culture. And uh, I even did have a little bit of a status change in my legal status on some level. I, I'm, a, I'm a legal Indian, actually. And uh, I'm allowed to host ceremonies privately in the private domain. And I kind of am getting a more of an idea of what that really means legally. Basically, um, what it means is you're you shouldn't be advertising a business, selling, uh, hosting ceremonies for for anyone to just come over. Um, you know, you shouldn't be buying paid advertisements. And I can actually do this for peyote ceremonies. I can do this for peyote ceremonies, but it. But you want to inform your uh, local authorities in your county, basically, uh, is, is how the legal process works through, through our church. If you're, if you're going to go to that route, which I'm not, I'm, I'm keeping everything private. Um, but I, if I were to want to host public ceremonies in my, in, even here in, this, in, in the city and, and create a, a public business where I'm accepting payments through a payment processor, I guess, you know, I could do that, but it would be, there would be quite a few legal steps, legal protection steps, uh, to, uh, get established that way. So that's not really what I'm not, not really what I'm trying to do. I am allowed to do as, as much ceremony as I want with any, pl any plant medicine, you know, just by myself, and I can also facilitate for other people in a private setting. So it, it's it's a really cool thing. It's an example of what can be done legally when somebody comes into a higher understanding of of uh, the legal system and you know how to how to write legal documents 
and stuff. So, you know, special thanks to uh, Man Fallon Standing, uh, president of the New Haven Native American Church, and all the other medicine workers in reality. We just... There's a, there's a lot of these communities around and stuff, and uh, it's really, really great work that they're doing because, um, you know, in my experience, these kind of medicines are very, very sacred. Uh, they're very profound. The uh, effects that they have on your, um, you know, mental, spiritual makeup and stuff, and uh, I've just had a very positive experience overall with that kind of stuff. You know, so I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, I, again, it's only another good sign, you know, that I was able to get some new medicines to work with. Um, so that's just another example of, uh, you know, a part of my journey and, uh, the upward spiral that I'm kind of talking about. And, um, you know, I don't want to ramble too long or anything. So like I said, I'm, I'm hitting, um, some of this Rape that I got from Rape. So this is one, <laughs> here's a funny story. I, I was ordering this this rape dot shop. They've got like thirty different medicines to choose from, at least thirty different uh, in you know different formulas of rape medicine that you uh, administer through the nose with all kinds of different plants. They don't even put ingredients on some of them, you know. Uh, so all kinds of different energies. Um, this one though was I was attracted to it. It was called a Ya Yawanawa Forca femin, Feminina. So it's got the word feminine in it. You know, and I'm I'm like a fully integrated androgynous, you know, bisexual hermaphrodite spiritually. Uh I don't really talk about it that much. Um typically when I'm doing video work, typically I'm usually in a male um persona and a and a masculine kind of energy. I am right now. Uh, but you know, I, I do have a hidden feminine, feminine spirit. It's basically like a, uh, a woman that I will sometimes shape shift into. And, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking so outside the box with some of this stuff. So outside the box with some of this, I'm not, I mean, I'm not even saying it in a way that's bragging. It's just kind of, it's kind of funny to me. And I'm sure it's kind of entertaining to, to some other people too. But, uh, you know, my intention behind using a medicine like with the label fem Forca Feminina on it is that maybe it'll help me be more feminine, you know what I mean? Not all the time, but, but maybe it'll empower my feminine side to be more beautiful. I don't know. I mean, uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's a really good. This is, the smell of that stuff was just great. I have no idea what they put in it. Literally no idea what's in that stuff. But it smells great. Um, it seems to have a pretty nice effect on me. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll help me uh, be more attractive and, and beautiful, uh, you know, as a female and stuff. That's kind of kind of what I'm going with. I'm, I'm an experimental type of, uh, you know, outside the box thinker. Uh, but I do like to experiment a little, uh, you know, pioneer a little bit, um, set examples and stuff. And I'm not saying that everyone should follow my example by any means. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, somebody's got to try new things. Somebody's got to uh, try something new if we're going to make discoveries here. So, uh, like, to make this a little more entertaining, but also to be honest about things that sometimes go through my head, what I would like to see... <laughs> What I would like to see for myself over time, and you know, use your use your imagination here. This is a, a very personal journey and a, a personal story. And you might you might I might say this, and then you might say, "Oh, well, that that's never going to happen. That sounds impossible." But I'm just kind of like, "Well, how do you know it could never happen?" You know, I would love to see it happen personally. But what I would like to see happen is I become physically more and more, uh, again, both masculine and feminine. It's not like I'm trying to just only be a female. You know, I, I would actually like to uh, eventually get to the point where I can actually physically shapeshift into uh, a really attractive woman and then, and then shapeshift right back into a man physically. I think it would be a really cool, almost like superpower. And, uh, you know, just because most people think that's impossible doesn't, to me, that doesn't actually mean that it actually is impossible. 
So, uh, you know, I was thinking certain, certain plants might assist me in that uh, spiritual intention. We'll see. It might take some time for me to master that one, you know, but spiritually I've already kind of mastered it, you know what I mean? And that's, that's quite a bit of uh, fun and entertainment for me at least by itself. Just being spiritually um, and energetically, uh, emotionally, and mentally a woman has been an amazing experience. It's been everything that I've needed, uh, you know, to, to help me heal from the trauma <laughs> that I went through. An entirely different set of just terrible, terrible, endless trauma that I went through. It, was, it wasn't as bad as, like, uh, what happened to me last year, you know, but uh, it was more of, like, a slow, creeping, just emotional death. Just emotional sadness, depression, death of just being a, a, a man, <laughs> a young boy and a young man, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, like, a, pre, a teenager and stuff. A preteen, adolescent, a teenager, and then a, a young adult who is really not matured fully. Uh, God, it was just terrible. It was just the worst experience. I mean, I mean it wasn't the worst, but it, it was bad. It really sucked. I was really depressed about it. Extremely frustrated, uh, you know, just because of sexual male desire. Male sexual desire that... I could never, ever find a uh, healthy outlet for and a healthy way of balancing that and a healthy, uh, you know, a healthy way of uh, coping with that even. It was just something that was constantly just wearing me down all the time, making me, like, hate life, literally. Like, hate myself, hate life, thinking that I was just doomed uh, you know, that I was always going to be some kind of weakling beta male that never gets <laughs> girls and shit. I mean, that's where I was for like solid 20 years. And I, I thought it was never going to end. It was just, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I would, I would study a game, uh, online and stuff and pick up artist communities and shit. You might not be aware of such things, but I, w I went pretty deep into that, uh, literature and, uh, you know, culture and stuff. There's some, there's some lessons to be learned there. It's not like all of it is just toxic masculinity or something, you know, that I did pick up quite a few, quite a bit of good advice from that, you know, it helped shape me into the person that I am now, but none of these people were teaching, uh, full on male, female integration. Nobody almost that I had ever heard in reality taught those things. I, I did find it once in an occult book written by uh, Nicholas Schreck, of all people. Mark Passios mentioned Nicholas Schreck on his podcast. He used to be uh, a Satanist. I don't know if he still is. He, he released this book at, one, at some point called Demons of the Flesh about left-hand path sex magic. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So I downloaded the book, printed it off. I didn't really read it for years. But in the book, they actually broke this down. They actually said exactly uh, what I came to experience firsthand through my own shadow work. And, you know, being catalyzed by uh, plant medicines, you know, like ayahuasca mushrooms and peyote and stuff, cannabis too, uh, I actually had the full-on male-female integration experience by myself with, with nobody guiding me in that direction. It just kind of spontaneously happened to me partially because I was in this sexually frustrated beta male condition chronically for 20 years and I was like trying to get past it. I was for, for I was like focused on it hard and I couldn't figure out any way to let it go. It was distracting. You know, I wanted to do the great work in podcasting and and be be a positive change in in, in the world and stuff and uh it, but I just couldn't mentally. I couldn't focus because I was just constantly worried about trying to get girls and shit, you know, trying to have girlfriends and it just never, ever would work out. <laughs> girls hated me. They, they literally hated me. <laughs> and I was like, why do they hate me so much? I can't figure it out. It was like, is my, I, I, I try to learn game and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. It would, it would fail every time. You know, but I kind of got the principles down, and, and one of the teachings in, in the uh, pickup artist community 
that I can never figure out. I, I, I could understand them with the left brain. I, I could get what they're saying and I can understand why it would work. But I was like, but how do you actually do that? So one of the teachings was, is that if you want to be good at picking up women, the, the, the last thing that the thing that you should never do, and you should just not be this person is a person who wants women so bad that, that your life is like, you know, you're unable to exactly like I'm described, you're emotionally fucked up over it and you're, un, you're unable to, uh, cope. You're unable to cope and you're just obsessed with get with getting girls and you, it's so much to the point where it's distracting and you don't have any other purpose other than that. You know, and there were there were a lot of these gurus in this pickup artist community would actually be doing that. Um, you know, they would be kind of obsessed with uh, hacking the female mind and getting in their pants over and over and over again and they would end up like just I, it's it's probably unhealthy if you were to ask me now. I was like, those people probably had some kind of sex addiction, some kind of problem, and uh, you know they might have been causing quite a bit of trauma being that way. Um, but uh, there there was there was some little tips and tricks that I learned along the way, but I just they didn't ever work for me, and I was just like, well, damn, even the even like the best pickup artists in the world can't fucking help me you know, attractive mate and shit. It was just, it was just pathetic and terrible. It was literally pathetic and terrible and it never fucking ended for me. Never fucking ended until, until one day, until one day I fucking graduated from it. And I almost feel like I've got more game than even they, they have on some level. Like, and it was a very weird way it was a very fucking weird way. I did not, not expect this to be the answer to all my problems. But now that I'm past it, it actually makes perfect sense. And it and it was the answer to all my problems. So, you know, if, if you happen to be resonating on any level with that, hopefully you're not. Because that was a really terrible place. It was like masculine fucking hell. It was masculine hell that never fucking ended. And the only way that to, to make it to ease my pain was was for some woman to come along and then and then like be my girlfriend was literally the only way that I could see out of it. I was like, nothing else is gonna do it, bro. Like I can do the great work, I can try to entertain myself with music and try to work out and better myself and shit, but you know, I still want I still want pussy and ass and stuff. <laughs> I still want to fucking be with girls and I'm like until, the, until, you know, I have a girl, like, I, I don't know, I couldn't, I was like, I just kind of obsessed, man, in an unhealthy way. In an unhealthy way, obsessed. You know, and I'll admit that. It, it was very unhealthy. And I just couldn't, I couldn't see through it. I couldn't figure it out. And I finally did. I finally figured it out. And it, it might not be what you want to hear, you know, if you're in that mindset. And, and I, I don't think very many of my listeners are in that beta male mindset, you know, in that desperate fucking, you know, little boy masculine mindset, hopefully you're not, but if you still are secretly or something, you still secretly wish somebody could help you, you know, get some, you know, I can help now. And, uh, what I would tell you is, uh, it's not what you want to hear, but you have to find it inside. You have to find it inside in your own consciousness and makeup. And, uh, if you can ever find it inside, um, you know, you, you no longer need it externally anymore. And that was the genius of this, uh, male female integration process that, you know, happened to me. And, uh, ever since I accomplished that, I've never fucking had a girl problem again, ever since then. The whole thing ended. The nightmare was completely ended. I graduated and I moved on entirely. So I don't I don't have that problem anymore. I haven't for about three or four years now. And uh, it, I, it was strange. I didn't expect to find my soulmate and my you know female uh, balancing force internally. But that's where it was. And uh, I can't even say that it was there the whole time. I'm not sure if it was. You know, it, on some level, like it, it felt like a split in my soul where I was born masculine and the only way to uh, fix that situation was for some female to come along and uh, balance it out and stuff, you know, which is a desperate place to be. 
And this is what, what these pickup artists would say. It was like, you can't be desperate. They can tell if you're desperate. You can't, it's a, it's a difficult thing to hide, but you've got to figure out some way to hide it, is what they were saying. <laughs> you've got to figure out some way to hide it, and the best way to hide it is to have 10 girls in your life. And I was like, but, but I have zero girls, so what the fuck do I do? They were like, no, you have to have a harem of like 25 girls all trying to get with you. I was like, and I was like, all right, that sounds great, guru. That sounds fucking awesome. But I can't even get one girl to fucking text me back. So what the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? You know, I was like, how does this even work for people? It would drive me crazy, man. I would see these guys uh, teaching you how to get girls. And they were like, you know, not even very attractive, physically at least. You know, I'm not trying to be condescending about it. But you had these guys that were uh, pretty ugly fucking unhealthy people. They would, they would fucking do really well. They'd get hundreds of girls. And it would just make me even more fucking upset. It was like, but, you know, if this guy can get hundreds and hundreds of girls, why can't I even get one? Why can't I even get one girl to fucking text me back and not just run as fast as possible in the opposite direction? You know, and I took it to all these extremes where I was like, well, look, obviously my energy by itself isn't fucking good enough. My energy by itself isn't fucking alpha male enough. How can I fucking make myself more alpha male? And, uh, you know, I, I bought this book, The Encyclopedia of Aphrodisiacs, and I started looking into aphrodisiac, you know, male enhancement herbs and stuff, natural methods. I wasn't going to be doing like... Uh, you know, steroids or anything weird like that, but I was like, finding all these herbs that you could take that boost your fucking sexual energy, and sure enough, they do work. They do work. They would make me five times as horny. <laughs> five times as horny, I'd be like, oh, certainly a girl would be attracted to me. Now I've got five times as much fucking masculine energy. It only makes sense. Maybe that's what I needed. Maybe that's what I needed to attract girls, and uh, what ended up happening is I would get ridiculously even more horny than I was, <laughs> and it would only turn the girls off more. And I and they it was like they found it distasteful and uh unpleasant that I was so fucking outrageously horny. You know, so it would be so much horniness that they would be like, you know, uh sorry, but I just I don't I don't I don't like that. Is is basically and I mean, it, it was it was just miserable. You know, but eventually it led to me, uh, with all the peyote and the shadow work and ayahuasca and different things too, eventually uh, I got past it. So that might have been part of the process of me getting over it. Um, but I guess, I guess since you've listened this long into the video, I might as well tell you my ultimate secret to game so that if you've got this problem, even just a little bit, even if it's still bothering you just a little bit, we can just move you past that, you know? Would you like to hear it? Would you like to hear it? Leave a comment, uh, maybe a thumbs up or something. Maybe sh maybe share the video with your, with your other friends who might be stuck, worried about fucking girls, or if you're a girl, worried about boyfriends or some shit, because I'm sure, I'm sure the same lesson applies to women and stuff. And I can happily say that I solved the fucking mystery forever. I'm, I'm forever solved this, uh, what do you call it, like a paradox or something about what you're supposed to do being born uh, in a male body, you know, being attracted to women physically and having terrible fucking game that uh, no matter how hard you try, never gets better. No matter how hard you try, it only seems to get worse. It only seems to get worse no matter what you try to do to make yourself more uh, attractive, beautiful, you know, exercise a ton, uh, study supposed pickup artist, master pickup artist, like Mystery was one of, one, one of my favorite gurus. He's legendary in that community. He's an OG legendary, you know, I guess you could call it pimp energy or something, you know, not, not in the, uh, not in the violent kind of way, but, um, he's a legend, man. I was, I was studied all his material and I was trying to implement it and I was like, not working, zero results for years and years, over a decade, zero negative results, negative results, man. Like the girls, they literally hated me. 
So that's like negative results. Not they're not just neutral to you and overlooking at you like some fly on the wall. No, they they see you, and they're just like, oh my god, make sure that guy doesn't talk to me, please. Make sure he doesn't get anywhere near me. <laughs> I can laugh about it now because I really wasn't, you know, in this predatory mindset. I wasn't trying to be, you know some rapist or something, you know, evil like that. I wasn't trying to manipulate them or take advantage of them or anything weird like that. I was just like horny. I was just like fucking horny, bro. And uh, the only solution I saw to that problem was get a girlfriend and, and fuck her a few times. <laughs> Literally, dude, that was my only fucking solution. And I was stuck in that mindset for decades, bro. Decades. And it was hopeless. It was just tragic. I was totally emotionally eaten up by it. Couldn't focus on anything. <laughs> like I couldn't bear. I couldn't focus on work. I couldn't focus on uh, things I was doing in life because I was just constantly fucking sad, sad, frustrated, and you know, hating on myself. Different things, all kind of different things. You know, I tried to do law of attraction and stuff. I would try to do you know, positive uh, mantras. You know. Tell myself I'm, I'm a pimp and I do have confidence when I, nope, nope, no confidence at all. Not a pimp, not fucking any of it, but I tried, I tried to try to, you know, what do you call that? Predictive, predictive, predictive program yourself. I don't know. Law of attraction kind of stuff that didn't work. Nothing worked. So what finally did work, what finally did work <laughs> and I can finally fucking finally feel it deep in my bones that I am, in fact, good at game now. I am, in fact, good at game, even though I'm not a rich billionaire. Even though I'm not a rich billionaire, I'm actually fucking dead broke. Even though I'm not a rich de billionaire, I'm actually fucking dead broke, one, one step away from being homeless. At least I fucking uh, don't need women anymore, you know what I mean? For, on that level. On that level. What I do need is, uh, you know, tribe members... Uh, other anarchists to network with, uh, you know, people with good hearts that uh, are trying to help the world heal, uh, you know, people ready to build a paradise and stuff. I'll take some more of those people, not being desperate or anything like that, you know, because I, I, I do as good as I can do on my own. I do as good as I can do on my own. I'm, I'm a pretty driven person, um, you know, so I expect to uh, be very beneficial that way, even if no one else wants to throw down or help at all, you know. At least I'll be, you know, fighting the battle alone. You know, but other tribe members, I think we would just get the job done a lot faster that way. But, yeah, on to the, uh, on to the game talk for all you desperate beta males or, or beta, beta females or whoever else might be listening. Old men who are just laughing at me. <laughs> Old men who are just laughing at me. Um, even I have no idea who might be listening to me on the internet, dude. It could be anyone. It could be someone's little kid or some shit, you know? I have no idea who's listening to me right now. I'm sure it's a variety a variety of people. If you're in the One Great Work Network, you can give me a high five or something because I did finally overcome uh, that shadow, you know, that was bringing me down. I finally did enough shadow work to, to get past a legitimate mental, emotional hang up an issue that I had, uh, that was preventing me from being my best self, uh, preventing me from being an effective person and really just causing me constant baggage and trauma, constant negativity, constant bad emotions, constant trauma. And, you know, it was just, it was, it was something that I emotionally and spiritually had to get past. And I, I literally thought it was never going to happen. Because I was, you know, had all my power external. You know, I was always like, well, some other girl has to be the one to get me past this. I can't fucking do it. I'm horny, bro. I was like, I can't fucking get past this shit by myself. It's not how it works. Like, I, I'm horny. I, I need a girl to make me not horny. <laughs> to make me feel good. You know what I mean? And what these pickup artists were all saying was like, no. No, bro, don't, that's the, the 100% wrong way to try to get girls. And I was like, well, I hear you, but that doesn't change anything. Me hearing you and understanding that my left brain helps me zero, zero help with that advice. So, uh, there were, you know, I was missing something. They might've been missing something too, cause they weren't teaching, uh, what, you know, what I found to be, uh, 
the way to actually get over that. So I'm going to lay it out for you. I'm going to lay it out for you. I, I will uh, warn you, it's a little bit personal. You know, it's something that you might try. Um, you can do it in your own way. I'm not going to make it X-rated or anything weird like that. But basically what you want to do is uh, there's multiple different techniques, and they're all more or less mental. They're all more or less mental. It's about emotional regulation of your own emotions, emotional sovereignty, meaning you're not dependent on anyone else to give you those emotions, right? That's the goal here. And that's what those pickup artists were, were teaching. They were saying, you know, that was good advice. They were saying you, you can't be needing women for anything. You can't be, uh, you know, they were, it was funny. They would even say like, as soon as she, if, if she's an attractive girl, as soon as she detects that you're less than 1% needing her for, for sex or something, it's like it, the more attractive she is, the more in tune she's going to be with that energy because she will recognize it on a dime. She'll recognize it instantly. As soon as you show one ounce, one percent neediness in any stage of the uh, sed seduction process, as they would call it, the instant that you show the tiniest amount of fucking neediness, if she's a dime piece, what does she do? What they would say is she's going to uh, turn away from you run to the nearest alpha male and give him all, all her attention and forget about you. And you'll be crying in your milk all night because you just, you just spent so much time trying to get after this 10 that you secretly knew you just had to be with. You just had to have her. And you were just emotionally invested in that for hours and hours and hours, you followed her around for maybe even days, thought you were getting close, thought you were about to get some. She was flirting with you, touching you a little bit, talking to you, you know, uh, you thought it was going great, but you just got into that uh, neediness for one second. And it was like, bam, she instantly fucking got off your arm, walks right over to some alpha male and damn, you never saw her ass again. That's it. They were saying that that's how the game works. That's the game, man. That's the game. You got to have 0% neediness at all times. You can, at all times. Especially if you're trying to get those dime pieces and stuff. That's <laughs> what they were saying. So I was like, okay, but, but how? That doesn't make any sense to me. And uh, I, I, I under, it makes sense logically, but how the fuck do you actually do that? So here's the method. What you do is you have to have your own feminine energy on tap, on tap, your own, meaning that it's not external to you. It has to be internal feminine energy. If you're a man, if you're a woman, it's going to be the opposite. You know, if you're a female, you're going to have to have your own uh, masculine energy on tap at any time. It has to be your own coming from you. Not from anyone else, not some, not some hoe that you got on a leash, not, not from your wife, not from your girlfriend, not from your other friends or whatever, not from your harem, unlike what they were teaching. Unlike what they were teaching, no. See, what I found out is it has to come from you as an individual, right? So you have to have your own feminine energy on tap at all times, ready for you you know, that you're uh, in control of and that you can do whatever you want with. And it's a weird thing to say. It's a weird thing to say because I do have a masculine body and a male voice right now. So like, what the hell am I even talking about? So hear me out. Uh, if, if you're interested, if you think you might receive value from this, you know, if you've got problems with the uh, opposite sex and stuff, hear me out. I'm going to take my time to explain this. But uh, we'll start with just a meditation, right? And this is, this is a great place to start. This is where I started with it. Right before I became fully male-female male, integrated and I, and I had that permanent tap, that well of feminine energy that came from inside me, you know, after I discovered that, I knew I was fucking set, bro. I knew I was never having any girl problems ever again. And I haven't. Uh, 
so, but, but right before that happened, I started to notice uh, if I did this meditation, this meditation, it started to balance out my energy. You know, if I got into that, you know, horny vibe uh, or whatever, if you're, if you're a younger guy, you know, not withered up and old and decrepit, if you still have some life force energy in, in you uh, on some level, you know, if you still have some attraction potential on some level, you know, you, you might understand what I'm talking about here. You know, if you're a girl, there's probably a female equivalent to this. Um, I'm a girl now. <laughs> So I know there is, in fact, a female equivalent to this, but I guess I'll just be talking to the boys here, since 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 that's where I came from. I came from I came from being a desperate beta male uh, loser who every girl hated. Every girl hated. They want nothing to do with me. <laughs> and at the very le at the very most, they would do is like pity me a little bit and say be nice to me a little bit just to be kind of polite. You know, secretly thinking, man, this. Poor fucking sap. This poor fucking sap is never gonna get laid. I don't know. I don't know how to fix him. I don't know what's wrong with him. I'm just gonna kind of be nice and you know say hey 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 friends. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go over here now, but it's nice to see you. <laughs> you know, so so what you want to do though is um, whenever you're feeling kind of horny, like you need some girl. You just wish there was some girl that would come over and screw you, you know, or whatever, be your girlfriend, tell you she loves you, you know, cook you dinner or some shit, clean your house, whatever the fuck you're wanting out of women, um, what you need to do instead of that, instead of that, as soon as you get that horny feeling, what you do is this meditation, this meditation is all internal. And this is, I'm teaching you energetic sexual sovereignty here. So don't abuse the teachings and turn it into a, we a weapon or anything weird like that. If you're one of my listeners, you're probably not going to do that because all I talk about is good things. And people who talk about good things tend to turn off and push away people who are evil. So I don't expect there to be very many evildoers watching my show. I mean, uh, hopefully I've turned you off and you just flip the channel over to something evil if that's who you are. So... But for all, you, for all you good guys, for all you nice guys, for all you guys who just want a partner, who just want some girl to just be your friend, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, you, you, can, you, you resonate a little bit with uh, my past and how much of a desperate beta male I was, you're like, man, that sounds like me. I've been there. I'm there right now. I'm fucking horny and, and I just, the, the, what do I do, Crystal Spider? What do I do? You've, you've warmed up me, you've warmed me up a lot. Now, now give me the fucking answer. Give me the secret. So the meditation is you get horny, say it's first thing in the morning or some, some shit. It could be any time of the day. And you just getting in that vibe, that familiar vibe of sadness where you're like, man, if I only had some girl, I could just, I would feel so much better, you know? What you do instead, as <laughs> soon as you get horny, what you do? You, you close your eyes, you imagine, you imagine a girl, right? Or a woman or, you know, if you're a man, it's going to be a girl. Uh, you know, if you're a desperate beta male um, man, it's going to be a girl. And uh, it could just be any girl that you want to imagine. You don't have to really, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend imagining your friend or something in reality that you're trying to, trying to get with. It should just be a, a generic girl that your mind is creating, you know, and, um, you imagine her. I was just doing it this morning for like an hour. Got me in a super solid mood. I was like, wow, oh, that's f amazing. That's going to be a great day. You know, I just spent some time with, you know, my imaginary girlfriend basically is what is what you, what you want to get to is you want to have an imaginary girlfriend, right? And this is the start of it. So you'd visualize a uh, girl in your third eye in your mind's eye with your imagination. Visualize uh, some woman and you can make her look however you want her to look. I kind of like the skinny vegan, you know, raw vegan cute, that type of girl, right? shape her into whatever shape that you prefer and if you're a woman it'll be the same thing but with a man now what you do is with your mind 
there's there's a million different variations to this. Literally, uh, it could it could go any way your mind is imagining, right? It could just be a picture of a woman, uh, you know, 3D moving around or something with a dark background, or it could be someone sitting next to you is a good is another good meditation. Have an imaginary girlfriend sitting next to you. I'm doing it right now. Got my imaginary uh, dime piece. Imaginary dime piece. What's your name, baby? Her name's Ananda. Her name's Ananda. Uh, that's my, that's my feminine side's name, Ananda. So what you do with your imaginary girlfriend is whatever the fuck you want to do to to some other girl. You just do it with your imaginary girlfriend that that you're creating with your mind, right? And so uh, guided meditation here. <laughs> Got my imaginary dime piece, Ananda. What's up, baby? What's up, baby, Ananda? Mm, looking good today looking good today sweetie and uh you you know put your hand on her leg and, and then she puts her she she puts her hand on your hand she says hey hey nathan hey nathan things are things are looking lovely today aren't they sweetie and i'm like yeah baby <laughs> yeah baby your hair smells good today your fucking your body's just looking super smoking super smoking just how i like it you're looking good today baby looking looking really nice i'm so glad you're here i'm so glad you're here my my uh my dime piece my fucking princess my motherfucking queen bee my uh my soul mate my best friend you know my uh whatever whatever you know sweet dirty talk you want to throw in however you want to however you want to do her man you know and that's just warming up that's just warming up you can then go and act out all your, you know, masculine, you know, frustrated energy or whatever. Uh, I, I would suggest be nice to your imaginary girlfriend, right? Be nice. Make sure it's consensual and stuff. <laughs> like, legitimately, though, it does work better. The, the uh, meditation works better if she's not fighting you. And, and, and you got to make sure she wants it. And she's, you know, excited to be a part of this. So uh, it gets deeper than that, though. That's just the first level. That's the first level of this uh, balance your sexual energy meditation here and be become uh, a non-needy alpha male, I guess you could call it, you know, a non-beta, non-needy uh, guy that's constantly turning women off because you're so needy and all you want is sex and stuff. So that's the first step, right? You have an imaginary girlfriend, and say you're laying in bed, like I was earlier today, feeling that kind of like desirous kind of energy. You know, your imaginary girlfriend could just come into into your bed with you, and then you can like act out some sexual fantasy uh, with a visualization. And what I've noticed, what I started to notice right before I fully male female integrated, because it gets a little deeper than this. This is just level one is if you'll do that for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, uh, for as long as you're just horny. For as long as you're just horny. And, and for men, you know, the horniness thing, it, it might not be as much that for women, uh, although they sometimes do get horny. Uh, for men, uh, they can be very horny. And uh, especially when you're not, when you're not balancing the energy then what happen typically happens for a horny beta male is they just end up permanently horny every day they're just permanently fucking horny and and it starts to wear on them and they start to uh you know then project that out into the world and they're just that horny sad beta male that's hurting inside like it like it physically legitimately hurts to be that horny, you know, like, like I've been there. It, it, it's kind of physic physically even taxing to be that fucking horny. Um, and this is because you're masculine polarized. So what, so what I started doing even before this, uh, guys, if you're and, and women, but guys, if you're, uh, watching internet porn or anything like that, you got to turn that off. This meditation isn't going to work as well. And this method isn't going to work as well if you're, you've got some kind of porn habit or anything. You should never watch internet porn. You know? You should never be doing that. And you should never be masturbating, ever. You should never be releasing s semen. Not even if you're with a girl. You shouldn't be releasing semen. Unless you're trying to create a child. That's the one exception. 
And personally, when I look out at the world, I don't think really anyone should be creating children right now. Very few people, if any, should be creating children right now with the problems in the world. A lot of people unconsciously do that on accident many times because they're always just trying to fuck. You know, they've got these sexual hang-ups. They really want to act that out. This is a safe way to do that that doesn't involve any other people. And it doesn't involve creating another person. So this is full sexual sovereignty, full-on sexual empowerment. And uh, it's a very he healing process for yourself that gets you into a condition where you're not needy anymore and you're fulfilled. You're fulfilled just by yourself. So if, you'll, if, if when you're horny in the morning or something, um, you know, if you'll just uh, do that meditation – visualize your imaginary girlfriend, you know, looking however you want her to look. And then even take it a little bit further with the, uh, with the visualization and with the meditation you could have. See, this is getting into the third eye and more imagination, almost technology here, almost like a consciousness technology. But what you can do is put your male body into the, uh, imaginary simulation you could say 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 your brain was some kind of computer that could create a video game for yourself as an as an analogy uh create kind of like a simulated uh room or something a simulated environment and the environment can have all kinds of different objects in it it could have a bed it could have a couch it could be an overlay uh, matching the current physical uh, room that you're in. So I'm in my living room now, but I, but I, like I said, I've got an imaginary goddess sitting next to me, uh, Ananda, and uh, she's just a figment of my imagination that I created, basically, you know. And um, so you know, you can create an environment for yourself. You can create a partner for yourself that way, an imaginary girlfriend. It sounds kind of childish and kiddish, but it's actually uh, a secret. It's actually an occult secret. And uh, actually, it's a spiritual technology that you can use to uh, come into balance sexually so that you're not turning women off anymore and you're not desperate and needy and you know never going to get laid you know, that way and always, always be disappointed with that. You know what I mean? Like maybe you could get a few partners, but they're never going to be, they're never going to be right for you. They're never going to be your dream girl. They're never going to, you're always going to feel disappointed because you're with this other person, but, but you can't just, you can't let her go because she is p pleasing you physically on some level. Been there, been there myself. It's not a good place to be. So, uh, you know, you know, but the thought of being single uh, is also terrible because you know you're never going to get another girl or anything, not anytime soon. You're not going to just go down to the bar and then pick up every, every single attractive girl at the bar. You know deep down that's not you. You're, you're actually some beta male. You're actually some beta male with no game and you're afraid of losing your girl, you know, because you know you're not going to get sex for years, possibly, if ever, again. <laughs> but now you don't have to worry about that. So this is step one. You know, create your uh, artificial, you know, computer simulated mind uh, simulation with your imaginary girlfriend. Then feel your imaginary hands in the simulation. I, you don't have to use your physical body because this is all mental. This is a form of mentalism, and uh, it's a form. It's a way of physically balancing your energy, and it does actually work that way. So what you'll see is if you'll just dwell in that fantasy for 30 minutes to an hour when uh, when you're feeling horny, you can feel your male persona. It's going to get deeper uh, when I get to the second stage. This is still stage one. You feel your your male um, spirit body, let's say your male astral body. Uh, in the simulation, in the mental mind's eye creation that you created, and you can feel your hands, you know, so, so I can do it right now. See, I have physical hands, right? My, my, uh, Ananda's right there, right? My, my dime piece, my queen bee and stuff. So I can put an imaginary hand around her shoulders and I'm doing that right now, doing that right now. She, she's smiling. She, she likes it. 
She's smiling. She likes it. She's blushing a little bit and pushing, putting, brushing her hair with my hand a little bit, you know, kind of something like that, right? But I'm all doing that imaginary. So I've got an imaginary hand stroking my imaginary goddess right now. And it's a good time, right? So uh, do that for 30 minutes to an hour. See if you don't physically feel like you just had sex a little bit, like you just had some really good sex with a physical girlfriend. What I've noticed with this type of uh, energy work, uh, sexual energy balancing work, um, you do have to dwell in the fantasy for a little bit longer than uh, it would take to uh, balance your energy out to, you know, having physical sex with a, with a physical person. Having physical sex with a physical person or any kind of, you know, sexual experience, it doesn't have to be actual sex. You could just be holding, sitting next to a girl, putting your arm around her, that kind of thing, flirting. If you have a physical partner, the uh, energy can balance out quicker, right? It's more intense physically, and it can, it can take your horniness level down faster, and it can balance you and cool you off and get you into a balanced state quicker. But as, as an individual, not just as a man, but as an individual in reality, the problem with that is, is in order to have that experience, some other person has to consent to that. And uh, another person, these people, other people do their own thing all the time. You know, like I, I've been, uh, I've had girlfriends before. Half the time they're not with you. Half the time they're not horny. Half the time they're not feeling that. Half the time, uh, they're over uh, in some other physical location doing something else. And when you're horny now, even if you had a physical girlfriend, it's not even going to help you most of the time because they're not even in the house. They might be like taking vacation for two weeks or something, you know? They might be out in the club flirting with other guys or some shit. So, you know, you're not going to have someone else's energy on tap 24-7. So that isn't sovereignty, that isn't sexual sovereignty, even having, you know, a wife or a girlfriend that's really good for you, that, that is solid, that's not the type of sexual sovereignty and ultimate empower, empowerment that I'm really talking about here. What I'm talking about is having it internally, both polarities, and being able to balance yourself out by yourself. And perpetuate that state of harmony, happiness, balance, pleasure, and, uh, you know, positivity without anybody ever needing to even look at you. So, so if you're a guy and you're attracted to women, you know, it would be great if there was 10 beautiful women around you who loved you with all their hearts at all times. You know, but that's just not the reality for a lot of people. It's not my reality. It's not my reality at all. And, and you know, I can't let that get me down. I can't let that get me down because if there's the minute that it lets that you let it get you down, well, now you're less attractive and you're never going to even be able to manifest that anyway. You know, because women do like men with good good emotions and good energy and men who are happy on their own, you know, and the same same for women for women. Uh, and men, I guess, they prefer women who are emotionally independent and not super needy and stuff and don't have, like, uh, you know, addictive personalities and just cling clinginess is what they call it, cling clinginess. You know, that might be fun for the first night, but, but you know, in that movie uh, Wedding Crashers, they had what's... <laughs> That funny scene with that girl that the, the guy meets and he calls her a stage five clinger because, yeah, they fucked and she just won't get off of him and it's getting weird and he's starting to get all these creepy red flags and he's like, uh oh, I've got to get as far away from this girl as possible. You know, that's a real dynamic that does happen, you know, to people where they're just they kind of desperate for a boyfriend or desperate for a girlfriend and whenever they get a little bit of attention they just cling on right and the problem is is as soon as you do that to another person they just start to get turned off they're like uh oh now they're not attracted to you now they're repulsed by you and uh if they're a solid like dime piece 
What I hear is the second that you do that, <laughs> they've seen it 10,000 times before. They put you in the category of all the other losers that they thought were alpha, ma alpha males. You know, because some of these dime pieces, as in the pickup artists, you know, we hear about it. Some of these tens... They've seen everything, bro. They've had guys chasing them since the time they were like, since since they were so young that it's creepy and and, and ugly, you know. Since they were in, in inappropriate times in their in their lives, they've had men interested in them sexually, and that just never ever stopped. And it, you know, they might be thirty five now, but they're still fucking dime piece. And uh, Every, every single interaction they've had with a man, it seems like, has been uh, something like, well, the man secretly wants to fucking get with me. You know what I mean? So they've got this highly sensitive social radar, and they pick up on all the cues. They pick up on your energy in ways that you can't even dream of perceiving. Like they, 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 It's almost like they're telepathic or something. And they, 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 as soon as your mind goes and you, and you project one thought saying that, oh my God, this girl is so amazing. I need, I just, I hope nothing happens to ruin this. I like, I don't know what I would do without her. I, I've got to, I've got to get this girl. It's like they instantly know you're thinking that and the, the attract the attraction that she feels for you tanks, goes to the bottom, loses interest, runs away from you never and deletes your number and you never see her again. Is is what I've what I've heard reportedly. That's how that works, and um, you know. So we're so we're still talking about stage one. Uh, I hopefully I've covered that in a way that makes sense. You know, you can act out a sexual fantasy with an imaginary partner that you created, right? Now, what I found out uh, when I fully male female integrated that imaginary partner is actually you, right? That imaginary partner is actually your feminine side. And uh, if you'll just interact with her and give her all of your male attention, you're directly pumping up your own emotions and your own satisfaction. So much so that if you'll dwell on that fantasy for 30 minutes to an hour, physically, it'll tone your energy down. It'll actually feel like you had physical sex. And you don't want to be touching yourself either. You don't want to be masturbating while doing this. Uh, again, because if you release sperm, your energy level tanks. That's another occult principle that not everyone knows, is that sexual fluids and orgasms actually drop your magnetic energy and your uh, energy potential. And it's really bad for things like exercise. It's really bad for uh, horniness levels which on some level can be used as raw material to make yourself into a more attractive person. But it's not just about attraction. It's also about power and manifesting using law of attraction. Kundalini and sexual energy can be used, and this is a known occult phenomenon. I'm not the only one who does this. You can use a strong sexual current, a strong sexual charge, and a strong sexual energy, when it's not, when it's off balance, it manifests itself as horniness, right? It manifests itself as horniness, especially if it's chronically off balanced, you know, meaning you've never balanced it out yourself in your whole life, then you're chronically horny and it starts to be very, very off balance. And I, I don't feel like that's really the best way to manifest personally. But the idea is you want to conserve that sexual energy and not release it uh, by jacking off watching internet porn and orgasming. Even when you're having sex with a physical woman, if that were to happen, unless you're trying to create a baby, there, tantric sex is basically about uh, having sex but not orgasming and not releasing sperm. And you, if you've never even thought of this, if you've never even gone there, you would, as soon as I say something like that, you would say, oh, but you would get blue balls. It would be painful. So, you know, that's just not going to work for me. What you'll find out is if you stop masturbating for, for months and months, uh, you don't actually get blue balls. You actually feel kind of like you had a full body orgasm almost, but you didn't really sperm. You didn't have that uh, orgasmic release of energy. 
What actually happened is that kundalini that was concentrated in the sacral chakra, as you can call it, in the testicles for a man, is actually uh, pulled into the rest of your body, and then you experience that kind of pleasure and when it's combined with that physical female energy that the female would be providing in the case of what i'm talking about today you're providing that energy yourself okay because you don't you don't have uh some girl that's in love with you at all times you know you you need to be able to do this yourself with nobody else participating if you want to be sexually sovereign and and have that unshakable male you know it's not even male it's it's an unshakable sexual prowess and confidence you know that un non-neediness that is that that allows you to be attractive i'm not gonna say that's the ultimate way of only you only need to do that and you'll be set because obviously you're gonna want to be a good person who helps the world who tells the truth and who's part of a global solution if you want to really have good game, I would recommend you do that even more so than having balanced sexual energy. If you're at least a good person who's in it for the right reasons and doing on the ground solutions, you know, telling the truth and, and has integrity and stuff, that's probably more important than even having balanced sexual energy and good game and stuff, you know, because good karma is not a complicated thing to figure out. And who wants to be with someone who's like, a sadistic narcissist sociopath with bad karma that has terrible priorities and is only out to hurt people and take advantage of people. I mean, only somebody with with a with some kind of mental problem who's a masochist or something, you know, who's insecure and doesn't respect themselves would even want to be around a person like that. So you don't want that to be you, and for that reason, if you want to have a truly good game, you need to be a part of a global solution, the awakening of all humanity, and help people by telling them the truth. Uh, you know, maybe go build a permaculture, you know, community or something. Do something important with your life other than just trying to fuck girls. If you're if you're trying to have truly good game, you know, that's what I do. I mean, we'll see if it works out. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it works out. Is the thing though, it doesn't fucking matter. To me, it matters 0%. I, I could care less whether or not that gets me laid or not. I don't fucking care about that. Because again, I, I graduated from that vibration of, of even giving a fuck at all about whether I ever get laid. It doesn't matter. Matters to me 0%. I could care less. You know, if I never get laid, that's probably good because uh, then we're for sure not going to have any kids. You know what I mean? And I just don't, I like I said, I don't think the world's in any kind of condition to where it's safe to even be having kids. Because these kids, man, if you're not careful, they'll end up like me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Completely traumatized, abused, and, you know, obsessed with becoming free. Which, uh, being obsessed with being free is good. But it would be better to just be born free and not born a slave, if you know what I mean. So let's work on that. And uh, what I found is that, or I, I thought of this, but if you were to create that world, probably you're going to get laid a bunch more because all the girls will subconsciously know that, hey, it's safe to have kids. It's safe to have kids. The world's all cleaned up. There's no pollution. I'm eating good food. There's a bunch of infrastructure. There's no enemies in, in reality at all. We took care of all that shit. We took care of all that shit. And now I'm gonna, you know, when I'm horny, I don't have to worry about, you know, what's gonna happen to the kids, or if this man is gonna take care of me or some shit, because it's all fucking taken care of. People wonder why there's a problem relating between the sexes, and part of the reason why that is is because it's a dangerous fucking climate everywhere. There's slavery going on, there's abuse going on constantly. People are being, you know, uh traumatized, abused by the banking monopoly system, by the uh, dollar matrix. It's crooked. So we're going to move on to uh, stage two. I'm about to run out of batteries on the camera. I'm just going to save this file. We're going to move on to stage two, and uh, you're going to like where it gets. It's going to get even deeper than, than what's already happened. Um, you can ask me questions if, you've, if I'm somehow not being clear enough about this. I'm going to hit the Rape, uh, use the bathroom, and I'll be... I'll be on to, this is already a uh, long video, so um, 
We'll be on to stage two here in a second. All right, check out this new drum I got. It's kind of fun. Nice bird. Fun stuff. But uh, yeah, so on to the to the stage two of this uh, process. And this is where this is where it's gonna get so deep and so profound that hopefully I'm fixing quite a few people here because uh, this this information can fix a lot of unhealthy sexual dynamics with people. You know, you've got a lot of uh, pred predatory men or even unconscious men who are causing women problems because of this issue of uh, unbalanced sexual energy. You know, that chronic horniness that I was describing, uh, the obsession with sex, the obsession with, with trying to uh, rack up, you know, more and more uh, numbers. Uh, what do they call them? Notches on your belt. Uh, you know, just trying to get with every single girl and then think you're a fucking man because you fucked, you know, 10,000 babes and stuff. You know, and wishing that was you, but, but ugh. it's so dysfunctional on so many levels because when you can't do it, you know, you take it personally and um, you internalize that frustration and pain and uh, you wish you could do it and you, you, you can't focus on more important things like getting out of slavery, you know, like legal protection, like learning some trade, you know, like learning how to pr program a computer or do something hard. I mean, because the hardest thing in your life is trying to get with the girl down the street. You know what I mean? And she doesn't even want to be with you because you're so desperate. She doesn't want to be with you and you can't figure out why no one wants to be with you. Can't figure out why no one wants to be with you and you're stuck there. It's, it's, it's something you can be stuck in for a long, 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 long time, for lifetimes even. You might not ever get out of it your whole damn life. So I'm giving you a shortcut um, for free, you know, you know, just because I'm a good person and stuff, and I do want to see the world heal. Like, I could literally be saving girls from being raped by telling people this, you know? Uh, save a lot of problems for people. Kids cre being created when, it, when the whole world's enslaved, you know, and then their their dads and, mo and mothers maybe didn't even care about the kid. They were just trying to, you know, satisfy that deep sexual urge that they can't figure out how to get rid of uh, other than fucking someone else. You know, it can be very unhealthy. It can be very damaging. It can create a bunch of karma in your life. You can get with people who are not right for you, who are not good people. You're just lustfully trying to, trying to uh, fuck and stuff. And create all kinds of problems for yourself and other people too. You can traumatize the women. You can be deceptive. You can be some kind of player that's lying to them and uh, fucking other girls behind their back. Cheat, uh, cheat on your wife, for example. You know, I'm polyamorous. I'm a polyamorous relationship anarchist, so I, I don't really believe in own ownership of other people. I don't believe in trying to lock some girl into a contract where she can only be with me or some some shit. I, I, I that's not my style, you know. If if two people love each other and just want to be, you know, monogamous, I'm not saying that's wrong either. It's just not what I do. But uh, you know, so on to uh, stage two of this process. So what you do in stage two? Now go back to your mental simulated fantasy with your imaginary girlfriend, right? in whatever imaginary environment or it could be you know your current room whatever where, wherever you want you and your imaginary girlfriend to be if you're a man if you're a girl it's going to be the opposite you and your imaginary boyfriend that you just got done touching and you know telling telling him or her how much you love her yeah and it doesn't have to all be just sexual you know physical connection you can tell you talk to the girl talk to the imaginary girlfriend or boyfriend Tell them how much you love them, how much you appreciate them, how beautiful they are and stuff. And that's only going to be creating good vibes, right? It's going to create that emotional satisfaction that you've been longing for. You've been longing for some girl that you can worship and caress and tell her nice little sweet nothings into her ear and stuff. So it's creating an outlet for that sexual energy that needs an outlet. That's the whole point of this meditation and this uh, style of uh, 
you know, balancing the energy is to give yourself an outlet that comes from you. And when you do that, you've, you've actually created a uh, infinite sexual loop. You've created half of an infinite sexual loop. And this second half is where the full-on male-female integration comes in that allows you to create an infinite circuit of, of sexual energy that then allows you to be a, a full-on generator. Because if you look into electronics... Uh, these principles are actually embedded into the universe. This male-female uh, energy is embedded into ele electronic generators. So what you'll see with an electronic generator is there's typically a rod, which is, I guess, the masculine, uh, you know, the masculine element, some kind of copper rod or something, and then there will be a, a tube that the rod is suspended in the middle of with magnets and wires and stuff. I don't know exactly how it works. I'm not, a, I'm not an electronics whiz or, or anything, but I, I think that's how a lot of generators are constructed. Some kind of copper tube or something inside of a steel, you know, uh, a, a, a steel tube with a copper rod going in it, something like that. Look it up if you're more curious, uh, you know, to get it right and stuff, but... When the, the idea is, though, is that it's a physical construction with typically a movement of some sort, some type of kinetic motion that generates electricity that then goes and powers entire electri electrical grids, you know. And when you, when you master this uh, internal uh, alchemy and stuff, you actually become that sexually. So where you're creating an infinite, infinite generation of more and more and more sexual energy in kundalini. And then, only then, can you really get into that upward spiral of full-on, you know, pimp, mac, fucking madness, you could say it, you could call it, just the straight gangster, if you're, if you're a male, straight gangster, pimp, fucking mac that we've all seen in reality here and there, you know, that that god with the ladies or if you're a lady that dime piece or whatever whatever try it on your own see see after after you take in the second step here try it on your own and and see what i'm talking about because it is real it does work um so uh what you do in the second phase go back to your simulated uh video game construct in your mind that you created mentally with your imaginary girlfriend and yeah, you can touch your imaginary girlfriend, you can talk to her, you can tell her how beautiful she is and, and stuff. And that's, that's helpful uh, for your male energy, it is helpful. Now what you do to take it even further and deeper and more powerful is now, use your mind, you might need a little bit of psychedelics or cannabis or something to stimulate your third eye, but you don't have to have that, you can do it sober. You can do this sober, there's nothing stopping you. I was sober this morning when I did it. And what you do, and this is where it gets really powerful now, take your mental perspective in the simulated uh, construct, in the uh, video game room that you created for yourself. Your perspective of your, in, say for me, I'm a man, right? Right now I'm a man. So if I have an imaginary girlfriend, I'm viewing her from the perspective of me sitting here next to her, Ananda over here, still there. So I'm over here. I'm Ananda's boyfriend. I'm Ananda's partner, her soulmate, her twin flame. I'm the man. She's the woman. Woman now. The man is centered here around my body, right? The man is centered around my body, the male energy. The female energy is over here next to me. Now what you do now, and this is where it gets extremely deep, and this is where you get the full-on male-female integration where you become the sexual generator. Take your perspective. Your, I'm looking out of my male eyes in the, simula in the simulated artificial construct of the mind. Hopefully you're able to mentally you know, construct this for yourself, and your mind's powerful enough to where you can create uh, this type of imaginary... Um, this type of imaginary uh, environment and stuff. You can even mentally do this, hopefully. What you do now is you take your perspective out of the male body 
or out of the male astral body, take it out and put it into her head. And now look through her eyes, right? So I'm doing this now. And you might have to close your eyes. You might have to get into some intense focus and uh, use your mind's eye, use your third eye. Psychedelics can help uh, ex enhance that in a safe state, in a safe space, right? Don't go crazy or anything. A little DMT might help a little bit. So uh, get online, go buy yourself some uh, Syrian rue and some acacia root bark powder. You know, don't go crazy with that now. It's extremely fucking powerful. Start with a tenth of a gram. But you don't have to have that. You don't even have to go there. Just you need to be able to do this sober uh, at any time, right? Because you don't you don't have to have any any kind of plant medicine or anything helping you. But it can enhance the 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 power of the uh, imagination. So um, what you do now, though, take your perspective and look through her eyes. Right? If you had a soul, a seat of your consciousness in your head. In your body, you want to be able to take that soul and almost astral project and go into this other astral body that you created, your imaginary girlfriend, your imaginary wife, or your partner, or your soulmate, twin flame, whatever you want to call her, your imaginary hoe, or whatever the fuck it is. Your imaginary man, if you're a woman. And then you, you get into her body, and then you drive that astral body vehicle and now you're in a woman's body you're in an imaginary goddess's body sitting next to your male boyfriend hopefully you can follow me with this one it might be something you've never thought of before you might need a little bit of practice right but this is this is the general idea this is the method and you might be asking yourself why do i need to do this and you know, follow me to the end of the video and you'll understand. So now you've got your, th your mind's eye and you're centered in the female body, right? I, that's what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a man, imaginary girlfriend's here, Ananda, right? Taking my eyes, my third eye, my astral body, and now I'm in Ananda's body. So I'm doing it now. And I'm trying to visualize myself as a girl sitting next to my astral body over here, centered around my male physical body. So I'm an imaginary goddess's body, and I'm feeling that energy. I can feel my titties, can feel my vagina is really moist. I can, uh, I'm sitting in a lotus position meditating. Got a nice smile on my face, feeling really cute. I'm feeling super fucking cute. And uh, I'm just sitting here meditating at bliss with myself. And, you know, I'm just a pretty little goddess over here. A pretty little goddess over here. Uh, goddess, you know, Ananda. And, you know, I'm really, I'm really cute. Nathan loves me. He's, he's my cute little boyfriend and, and whatnot. He's just my cute little partner and stuff. He's always looking out for me and, and everything. And I'm just sitting over here being a really cute goddess. And, you know, um, I got my titties out. I'm all, I'm all naked and stuff, you know. I got my titties out. I feel really nice and pleasurable, really nice. To, it feels really good to be in a, in a female's body. It's, it's a little bit different, you know. Things are a little bit looser i would say things are a little bit lighter less you know less concentrated and more loosey kind of goosey you know i can feel my wavy hair i can feel um i just whatever you know it's nothing out of the ordinary it's just you know typical day as a woman and i'm just sitting over here minding my own business um, I've got my boyfriend, he's next to me, and the whole house is safe, and, you know, I don't know what to do other than just be myself, you know, I guess I can look over at Nathan and, um, you know, just congratulate him a little bit, maybe put my hand on his leg and stuff, 
put my hand on his leg and stuff and, you know, just tell him what a great man he is or whatever. What a great man he is or whatever. I don't know. I'm just over here being my own goddessy self and stuff. And, um, you know, it's fun. I think I might... I think I might get up, dance around a little bit, maybe shake my ass a little bit. I don't know, put some music on or something, you know. Get up, do my hair even, uh, walk around the house, you know, show my body off a little bit. I know Nathan's watching and stuff, so I might as well just, I might as well just wiggle it a little bit. I might as well just, uh, you know, turn around and look at him. And uh, so what you do now, <laughs> what you do now, hopefully you were able to follow that. Hopefully you're able to follow that. Hopefully it didn't weird you out too much. I'm back in my male body, centered center around my physical body. Ananda's up over there. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her. I'm like, yep, that was that was pretty solid. That was a pretty solid experience. Thanks for that one, Ananda. And then I go back to Ananda's brain, back into Ananda's body, astrally over there. I astral project, and now I'm a woman again. So let me do that real quick. Yeah, and then I put my, you know, put your hand on your hip and like shift your hip to the side and then, you know, maybe do some girly little, you know, gestures or something and say, yeah, that was, that was pretty fun, Nathan. So, um, what else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? It's my house. I'm, I'm the queen bee here. I'm the queen bee here, you know. I don't know what to do other than walk around and look cute. I don't know what else, what else to do other than walk around and look cute. You know, try to try to turn Nathan on a little bit. Maybe we can maybe we can attract his attention and just have some fun here. I don't really know. Okay, so <laughs> what you do though is you go back and forth between uh, your male astral body and your female astral body. Now you have two two astral bodies. So what you did is you divided your consciousness from a unity consciousness into two separate uh, astral bodies. So you split yourself into duality, right? You're no longer a unified consciousness. And mentally, you're now kind of piloting two astral bodies almost at the same time, but not quite. So you're kind of going back and forth between you uh, in my case, my male um, self, which for, for now is centered in my male body, right? And when you when you practice this, you can actually um, strangely have a female body, in my case, s centered in my male masculine physical body, and then do the exact same meditation, but opposite. So let's just say... I'm going to be feminine centered around my actual physical body and I can feel again my beautiful titties and I'm just sitting here you know um, being a goddess sitting here being a goddess I feel all of my lady parts and everything I've got my beautiful goddess hair and now Nathan's over there now Nathan's over there and Ananda's over here Ananda's over here looking cute you know being comfortable and cozy and shit I'm gonna lay back I'm gonna lay back and just you know Brush my hair, relax, lounge around a little bit. I don't know what Nathan's going to do. He does his own thing. What do, what do you want to do, Nathan? He's just looking at me. He's just looking at me like some creep. <laughs> what, do you, what do you expect? He's just looking at me like some... Oh, I just, made, I just made him blush. He's kind of ashamed now. So what are we doing next, Nathan? Nathan's he's he's turned around he's kind of ashamed he's gonna go in the other room gonna go in the other room maybe play some piano pretend like he's not obsessed with me pretend like you know uh he's he doesn't secretly want to look over his shoulder and check me out and stuff so I I see through your shit Nathan I know what you're about I know what you're about I know I know you're just trying to get inside me and stuff <laughs> so uh you see basically uh the process here um it's entirely made up fiction. It's entirely a fantasy, you know, simulation that you're running between two imaginary people, one of them male and one of them female. And uh, you just kind of play that back and forth as much as you want. And what this is doing internally is uh, it's healing this kind of trauma that you might have. Say you're a beta male man or in the case of 
a woman who's been desperate for male attention her whole life, but can't get it or some, something like that, you know, has men always mistreating her and has no self self respect, no boundaries, you know, can't figure out why men are always using her and then just ditching her later, you know, getting her pregnant and not taking care of the kids and just running off with some other girl. You know, there's all kinds of traumas that people have uh, around sexuality and stuff. Uh, I, I had it for a really long time. And when it, once I started doing this, you know, I, it was like I opened some sort of treasure box and graduated out of that. Never had a problem ev ever since then. This happened about three or four years ago. It's just started, you know, doing that whenever I felt like. And uh, when I first started, I would, I would forget that I had that power and that I could uh, just have an imaginary girlfriend at any time. And, you know, uh, I would have this unconscious kind of like, program that was still lingering in my subconscious where I would get back into that, you know, desperate kind of male, uh, loser, you know, needy vibe. Uh, but I would remember, I would, I would get into that for a few minutes and I would start, you know, at social events, for example, there would be, a, a somewhat attractive girl there. And my old self before I learned this technique would be like hyper-focused on her, you know, because this is the first girl that I've seen in any kind of social context that I that I kind of liked. And it could have been years gone by myself with no girls, constantly fucking worried about how I'm going to get a girl. You know, wishing I had dates, wishing I had girlfriends, wishing I had uh, some 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 hoe that I could come call over, you know, at, at 2 a.m. to just, you know, have fun or something. And never having that, you know, it can drive you crazy. If you're a horny, if you're a horny fucking beta male, it can absolutely ruin your fucking life. I know I'm not the only one who who had been stuck in that uh, immature kind of beta male loser vibe. I know I'm not the only one who's been stuck there. There, there might be even some people, you know, who listen to me who might have not fully figured it out to the degree that I have, and and hopefully I'm helping you to. Uh, you know, help you out with that one. Hopefully this is helping someone. It's all I can hope for, you know. It's all I can hope for. It helps me all the time. I literally do it all the time, all over the place. It's, it's something private that you're doing with your own mind that nobody can even tell what you're doing, you know. Nobody can even tell that you're doing it, and they don't need to know. They don't need to know. It's not for them. It's for me. It's for me. It helps me. It just keeps my energy balanced so that I'm not, you know, getting off balance, you know, getting off balance and acting weird again, <laughs> acting like, acting weird again, like, you know, uh, I need something or, or something, you know? So uh, that's the basic method here. Uh, what you know, can happen when you start to do that is it's almost like it's awakening something that was, you either never knew you had, and maybe you didn't have it, or it was something so hidden in your consciousness. It might've been there, but you just didn't know about it. That's kind of, that's kind of how it was for me. It was almost like, you know, maybe I had a feminine side, Maybe I had a, a, a feminine, feminine side. I don't know if I did, honestly. Because I didn't. It, I, ever since I was fucking in, into girls, once I got, you know, 12 years old or whatever, started liking girls, I always was like, well, I'm a boy. Girls are some foreign object, foreign alien thing that I don't understand. I don't understand them. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, they're, they're attractive, and, and I, wish I, could, I wish I did get it, but I don't. I don't know if I ever will, and, um, you know, I was always thinking, I was like, man, it seems like it's impossible to please them, it seems like it's impossible to fucking attract them, it seems like they just want nothing to do with me, you know? I mean, if that's not, if that's not the story of your life, well, good job, you know? <laughs> Maybe you didn't have that problem, but I, I was stuck in it for decades, completely isn't a part of my reality at all anymore. Completely healed that uh, divide that I had. Uh, the the problem of being uh, a boy with no uh, a man with no women 
The problem of being desperate, you know, the problem of being sad about that, gone. Completely don't, don't need it anymore. And I never will ever again. I solved that riddle. Solved that paradox. Solved that conundrum. Solved it, and I and I'm only been better since since I figured it out. Um, so what can happen is when if if you start doing that and it works for you, and you think maybe you figured it out too. Uh, I'm not saying everyone has to do this. You know, I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone or that everyone even needs to do this. You know, I'm not saying this is for everyone. It's just what works for me. It's what works for me. It's what I do. Since I started doing it, though, I do uh, tend to shapeshift in, energetically into a female. So I consider myself, like I said earlier in the video, I'm a. Uh, you could call it bisexual because I am. You know, my female side is attracted to men. My male side is attracted to uh, ladies and stuff. So you know, sometimes when I'm feeling girly, I I like dudes. Sometimes when I'm feeling like a man. I like women, you know what I mean? I don't think uh, there's anything wrong with that at all. I don't think that's something that you should be ashamed of. And, uh, you know, I was never gay growing up or anything. I didn't, I, that was always another weird foreign thing to me. Uh, you know, I started liking girls in, I would say, middle school. And I'd always liked girls, and I never liked boys in that, in that way. I had never consider myself gay i just thought well I, I guess that's apparently a reality for some people i don't get it i don't get it that's not how my body works that ain't that ain't how my mind works but apparently i had heard rumors that some people who are boys are attracted to other men and stuff and i was like well okay <laughs> whatever I, it's not for me but uh you know i'm not going to be judgmental about it either i'm not going to be violent about it or you know bigoted about it or anything like that it was just something that was like, huh, well, that's strange. That's strange. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> you know, you do you. I'll do me. But, uh, um, you know, I don't even think I would call it gay either. I don't even think I would call that homosexual because uh, it's, it's, not, it's not really what it is for me. It's, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a boy. I like girls. I'm a man. I like women. But I'm also a woman, and I like boys, and I'm also a girl, and I like I like men or whatever. So, uh, you know, I, I I call that male female integration. I call that healing uh, yourself. I I call that being a sexually empowered, you know, fully sovereign, uh, energetic, you know, androgen. Androgen is is another name for it. Uh, a hermaphrodite, you could say, spiritually and stuff. And like I was saying, I think early in the video when I was kind of getting into this, it, it would be really hilarious if I could figure out how to uh, physically shapeshift into uh, a woman, lose the beard in like 30 seconds, just transform, uh, even five seconds. You, you, stare at, you stare at me, and I have a beard, and then somehow magically the beard vanishes, and I grow tits, and, and, the, and somehow you know my genitals change. And all of a sudden, I'm a really pretty girl. That's that's kind of what I'm going for. So, uh, you know, maybe some of these medicines will help. If I take enough, you know, if I take both female enhancement, you know, herbs and hormones or whatever, I don't, I don't take pharmaceutical hormones or anything weird like that. But female enhancement herbs, let's say, female enhancement medicines. Can, cannabis does enhance the female side of things. Sometimes if I'll take cannabis, I'll notice that I'll be shapeshifted in a fit, you know, spiritually into a woman for hours and hours and hours and hours on end. And I'll, it'll be female, female Nathan or Ananda, as she likes to call herself, all day. You know, I'll just be, and it's weird because your relationships to other people change. If if you do this and it's the right path for you, and I'm not saying it is. But it might be. But um, if you start doing it um, and you start shape-shifting into the opposite sex energetically, your relationship to other people totally changes. Because uh, when I'm feeling like a woman, uh, you know, if, the, if there's a boy around, well, I'm a girl and he's a boy, you know, there's now some sort of sexual uh, charge there. It's not two dudes in a sausage fest anymore. 
You know, and there's no competition between me and other men now. Like, like that's another toxic, you know, male, beta male quality is viewing other men as your competition because everyone's, every guy in the room is trying to get with uh, some girl. There might be one girl in the room and ten boys. It was a common thing for me. It used to drive me fucking nuts. Every, every social situation I would be in, it was, it was a sausage fest every fucking time. The only exception that I had ever found to that rule was at a fucking yoga class. You know, and I just didn't like authority. And at yoga classes, there's an authority figure, the, the yoga teacher. And I just, that wasn't my vibe. I was an anarchist. So I was like, well, I can't do yoga classes. <coughs> but where the fuck else are you supposed to meet women? Was my problem. I was like, I literally, that was the only venue where there were more, more women typically than men. Uh, you know, without exception, basically. It was always at least 80% men. And, uh, you know, sometimes 100% men usually. But, you know, if you were lucky, it would be 80% men. It's in, in, in any venue or social situation. Bar, club, One Great Work Network, almost anything. Like, it was always 80% men on a good day. And it, it used to drive me crazy. And if there was one attractive girl in the room, I would just be hyper-focused on her and trying to game her, trying to figure out how I can introduce myself. And, you know, she's surrounded by five other guys who've got the same thing on their mind. And it was just fucking hopeless. It was like, I have to be have better game than every other guy in the room somehow. I've studied, you know, but it never works. <laughs> I've studied, but it never fucking works, you know, and they already know her, so I was f f fuck, <laughs> you know, it just drive me crazy, make me so frustrated and sad, and, uh, you know, I just don't need that, personally, I don't, so now when I'm in a room full of guys, if I feel like it, I just turn into a girl, and now it's a totally different situation, now I'm the fucking girl in the, in the center of the room with 10 other fucking guys, so now I can, like, play that role, you know, sometimes my voice will change and I'll start acting like a girl, which I think is kind of fun and entertaining. Maybe flirt with the guys a little bit. Maybe try to seduce them a little bit, just for fun, you know, not because... You know, if there's a really attractive guy, though, you know, like I might legitimately try to seduce him, you know, so... <laughs> Something to think about, you know, you don't have to take it that far if you don't want to. This might just scare you, make you think I'm some kind of weirdo, but whatever. Whatever, man. At least I do the great work. At least I uh, try to help build sovereign community and tribe and tell the truth and stuff. So, you know, if, if you think uh, those kind of <laughs> ways of thinking is just too weird and too much, you know, don't do it is what I would say. But, but it works for me. It works really well for me. Never had a girl problem since. Never. I don't expect to ever have girl problems. Ever. Ever again. Forever. So, uh, it's a good place to be. It's a place of empowerment. It's a place of abundance. It's a place I feel like I've, my game has improved 10,000 million times because I, I studied game. I was kind of obsessed with it for decades, you know, didn't get anywhere with that. But once I learned this, don't fucking even need game. Don't even fucking need it. Cause you know, I, I'm already set, bro. I already got my soulmate. I already got my twin flame. I am a fucking girl. What do I need girls for when I am a fucking girl? I'm a fucking girl, dude. Like, if I, if I want sex from a girl, I'll just fuck myself mentally. Yeah, I feel great about it. Feel like I feel like sometimes even better than having physical sex, you know? It can get weirder than that. I can I can make it weirder for you if you want. There's such a thing as fucking like astral DMT entities and stuff. So, you know, you can fuck spirits that are either male or female or possibly even androgen, I'm sure, I'm sure that are imaginary that exist in the DMT psychedelic realm. But that's for another podcast. Maybe I'll save that one for later. You know, cuz I do have stories about that. It's it's an it's another thing that you can do without a physical person. You know, but, but there's some other external entity to yourself that's made out of spirit or something, but it's not you. And you can go and mentally fuck that thing. And again, dude, this happened to me only, only a couple of weeks ago, maybe, maybe four weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And this fucking thing, 
This, it was like an alien or something. It fucked me for hours and hours and hours. I was the girl. It, it was a male, you know, entity. I think it was some kind of like Anunnaki or something. It was some kind of alien. Had a big weird head. <laughs> Dude, it fucked me until I was a melted pool of fucking like plasma squirt or something. Melted, just orgasmic, like knocked out, KO'd by this fucking thing. It fucked me better than any physical person has ever even come close to fucking me. Completely satisfied me. And I was fucking set on sex for weeks and weeks and weeks. I didn't even need to fuck myself after that for weeks. Because that thing just fucking laid me out, dude. It just fucking had me like puddled up. And I was a happy girl. <laughs> I was a fucking happy camper. You know, so uh, that's another possibility. We'll get, you know, try some ayahuasca or something if, you, if you're trying to go there. But, uh, you know, I, th I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you guys learned something. I don't, I'm, if I think of something else, I'll turn the camera back on. But uh, I think that was a pretty solid lesson in both game uh, sovereignty energetically, which is the foundation of, you know, becoming physically sovereign. If you're not, you know, energetically sovereign and you need other people for some weird reason, you know, and lust, lust and uh, just trying to balance out horniness is a very common reason why people are attracted to uh, partners and stuff that are not even good for them. You, like you can see all these flaws in, in some girl, but because she's mildly physically attractive to you, you're going to overlook all that shit because you're just that fucking horny. You're just that desperate and horny that you're going to overlook all of these glaring red flags, flaws, character flaws, you know, bad priorities with some girl or boy if you're a girl, you know, but you just need dick that bad if you're a girl or you just haven't been laid in years and years and years and it's just fucking with you, you know, as a man. It might sound familiar, but hopefully it doesn't, you know, because that is a very terrible place to be. If you've had that problem, you might consider trying this method. It works 100% of the time, every time for me, and I've never fucking had a problem since I started doing it. Never fucking had a problem. So, uh, you know, I've got this kind of, like, non-attachment. You know, when it, when it comes to actually, you know, being with other partners and stuff, you know, attracting actual physical partners and girls and, and whatever, boys, girls. I don't need them, dude, is, is what makes me, you know, good at game is like, if you're, if you're helpful, if you're a friend, if you're in it for the right reason, if you want to be a part of a solution and stuff, then yeah, dude, come on, come on board, girl or something, you know, come on board. We'll do the great work. If we happen to have physical chemistry, well, you know, that's just a bonus, it's also good. I don't think it's a good idea to go create children or anything, you know. So, uh, you know, if, if, if we were to uh, exchange energies, as they call it, exchange energies or do a little bit of tantra or just hold each other's hand or something, you know, say nice things to each other. I don't personally see very much wrong with that, but you do want to be responsible. Uh, you know, having children, I don't think it's a good idea right now. So I'm trying to avoid that. Maybe don't do the, uh, intercourse, you know, with, with the yoni and the, um, lingam going in the yoni just to be safe. There's other ways to do it. There's other ways to pleasure each other. You don't have to do that. If you're, if you really want to be safe and responsible, you know, cause I think the world needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And, uh, there's a lot of big problems that people have globally with these crazy uh, dark occultists and their murderous fucking uh, intentions and their psyops, police state, child trafficking, the list goes on and on and on. And how many people in reality are too busy trying to get laid? So busy and, f and obsessed with trying to get laid that they literally can't focus for a second on trying to do anything about that. I used to be there. Uh, I mean, I listened to Mark and I knew it was a very important priority in life and I would put energy into it. But at the same time, I was just constantly like, well, how am I going to get laid today? How am I going to get laid today? How am I going to get laid today? 
I mean, it's hard to focus on more important things when you, you physiologically can't stop thinking about how you're going to get laid, you know? It gets you in trouble, too. It gets you in big fucking trouble. You know? Get, get with the wrong girl who's still, still got a jealous, you know, husband or something. You get your ass kicked being that desperate fucking beta male trying to get in some girl's pants secretly when she's got a, a, a male dominator boyfriend, you know? You get your ass kicked being that horny beta male. So uh, it's dangerous. So hopefully I'm saving you guys a lot of suffering and trouble. I had to go to like 25 peyote ceremonies, take a bunch of magic mushrooms, take cannabis for years and years and years and years, ayahuasca, maybe a little bit of acid, before I fully male-female integrated. I did so much shadow work to figure that out. So much fucking shadow work. Unimaginable amounts of shadow work. Because these medicines, they can slow time down. And they can make it seem like you've lived longer than physically, you know, compared to other people. Your mind ages faster than your body does when you're on some of these medicines. You know, peyote, for example. Some of those ceremonies, it would feel like I was out there for years and years and even decades and centuries. It would feel like my mind was going so fast and I was aging so much mentally in one night that I was like some kind of grandfather with all this wisdom coming back from it. And then I went to that like 25 times, you know, you know, before I may have female integrated. And, uh, you know, for that reason, I'm able to give you guys a shortcut here. I'm able to give you guys a consciousness, spiritual technology that you can go and use, and you don't have to go through all those fucking ceremonies and just be constantly obsessed with sex forever, you know? I just solved the problem for you. Hopefully, it helps someone. Hopefully, it helps someone. That's all I can fucking ask for. I'll probably be talking about this on a podcast with, like, uh... I want to bring it up with uh, a couple One Great Worker friends. We'll see. We'll see if they can handle taking it that deep, you know. It's a pretty personal topic. Uh, you know, I, I like to get pretty personal on my show. I like to get a little weird. Uh, if you've noticed, if you're a real follower, if you're a real fan, you might have noticed. Sometimes I do act like, you know, uh, a girl or a woman. And now you know why. Now you know. It's because I am that. So I am that, but just only some of the time, you know, not all the time. So with that one, I, I guess I'll let you guys go. Peace, love, and anarchy, and stay on the path. We're all here to solve this big riddle. So uh, put, do, put in your share, you know, do the great work stuff.